Hey, it's Diane, and welcome to the Cultivate with Courage YouTube channel. It's Friday, which means a book review, my favorite video of the week. And today is actually the last book review of the giveaway. So make sure that you check this out because I think it's gonna be a book that you definitely are going to want to listen or read. If you're new here and you like what you see, subscribe and send me a comment below and let me know what you think. I'd love to know everyone who's out there. So drop an emoji and get creative, have fun, say hi, I'll say hi right back. I hope that you are all feeling my zen vibes, my cool and calm energy because that's what today's book is all about and I can't wait to share it with you. Making money like a man. Stephen Hagen is the founder and the head teacher of the Dharma Field Zen Center. And I listened to the audible version of this book, but I also have a hard copy as you see. And the audible version is narrated by William Hope rather than the author, which I totally appreciate because he does an excellent job of connecting with the listener. I was so impressed with the book and the learnings of Stephen Hagen that I went directly to the website for the Dharma Zen Center and I couldn't close my browser fast enough. So I don't recommend that you do that, but I do recommend this book. It is a practical and easy to understand teaching of Buddhism. And for transparency with you, I read and began practicing Buddhism alongside a journey to becoming more spiritual in my own life. So if you want to say I drank the Kool-Aid, fine, I did. So let's move it right along. Get to the point already. What's the book about? Well, Buddhism helps us realize that that urgent need to get to the point or to get anywhere, basically, prevents us from being present in the here and now. And why I was so interested in testing the Buddhism learnings for myself is because I was a basket case, control freak, check. Motivated by accomplishments, check. I had a perception that if I wasn't doing something to better myself, then I was being lazy and content which is not true. It was a feeling of always having to run a rat race, right? To be constantly on a schedule, checking my watch, having a checklist and you know what I was checking off. And had I not began practicing Buddhism, I don't even know that I would have been able to see that about myself. Let's talk about who might find this book and this amazingly produced video interesting enough to keep your attention for hopefully around 10-ish minutes. If you feel this close to losing your shit more times than you are proud to admit, stick with me. If you consider yourself to be religious but are also curious about spirituality, stick with me. If you just can't help yourself and you always have the need to be in control of everything and everyone, you might want to hang tight. Let's say that you're easily annoyed by the shit people do and the fact that you have to look at them right now in this video. I'm going to close my eyes right now and your name is going to pop up right on the screen just for judging me. Just kidding. I don't know any magic. Also stick around if you just feel too damn busy all the time, or you're tired of living in ignorant bliss to everything that's happening with you in this exact moment. Stick with me because this book might be for you. So here's why. Buddhism begins with developing an awareness to live in the present moment. Duh. Fine. I'll admit that I was the only person who had no idea what that meant. So my friends, this is Buddhism, plain and simple. First, it is seeing that the difficulty to have a peace of mind, the inability to see things how they really are, the inability to see that everything we want to experience is already our reality. It is the here and now. All of this creates 
feelings of emptiness and dissatisfaction inside us. Simply put, it is the constant comparing of reality to our expectations that makes us feel unhappy because we are constantly seeking an experience that is not reality. So now, how does Buddhism get us there? Buddhism doesn't advise you to give up control. It's really about acknowledging that we never had control in the first place. Change is an inevitable part of life. We're born, we grow, we mature, we age, and we die. There's no stopping any of that. None of those things are within our control. Second, Buddhism shares eight practices for finding the peace of mind. The right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right meditation. Buddhism teaches that to find a peace of mind, we have to let go of our tendency to see the world as a backdrop to fixed concepts in our lives. Now, hold on to your butts because I'm only going to share examples of four out of those eight practices. So go ahead and get your pen and papers ready because you might wanna write it down. Right view. Right view is about seeing things without judgment or opinion. Right intention is about being aware of this exact moment. Simply be still and with this moment without thinking or wanting for anything else. There's nothing else to think about other than this very moment in your life. Right effort is making sure that you act and think without effort, never trying to control what you can't. Right mindfulness is how you find your calm. It is about stopping and being mindful about how we are reacting to everyday situations. If we stop and think about how our body and our mind feels, then we are being mindful. Being mindful is the intentional effort to not focus on the situation, but how it makes you feel physically, emotionally, and mentally. And at the same time, do that without judgment. To begin practicing these principles, all you have to do is simply observe. Do not try to change anything or yourself. Don't react or try to justify. Does that sound fun? Last, that I will share with you is in Buddhism, there's no such thing as self or personality. The self is not the definition of our individuality. Buddhism believes ideas such as personality, soul, or self is the attempt to capture an ever-changing stream in a frozen view. So the example used in that sentence is the word stream because a stream is constant movement that is central to our lives. We aren't floating in a stream, we ourselves are the stream. So the truth is that all things belong to a whole and everything is connected. Buddhism is about achieving enlightenment. And the key messages of this book is, as we learn to stop making judgments of ourselves, others, and situations that we face, we can break out of the cycle of confusion and dissatisfaction, which is dukkha. If you think this is a journey that you'd like to explore, start in the beginning by practicing new approaches to living with mindfulness and deeper intentions to find yourself able to be in the present moment and enjoy it. Just breathe. When you are aware that you are feeling nervous, tense, anxious, close your eyes, start focusing your attention on your breathing. Slowly, you will calm your mind and discover the power of being aware and present. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being present here with me today for this video. Don't forget to check out the video description below to enter for a chance to win your copy of this book. I'll see you on Tuesday for our next video. Thanks for supporting your girl. And until next time, stay inspired.
Making money like a man.